In this video, you will learn how to control the speed of a motor, so you can make it rotate at different speeds instead of just alternating between stopping and full speed. You can see here, I'm running a program that makes the motor speed ramp up and then ramp back down gradually instead of just going instantly to full speed. I'm going to unplug the motor now so you can hear me a little better. This will allow you to make your robotic vehicle drive and turn at different speeds and help you compensate for the steering if it tends to drift off to one side when you try to make it drive straight. Let's switch over to Tinkercad and take a look at how we are going to wire and program the circuit to control the motor's speed. Now, don't be intimidated by this circuit, you should have it assembled from a previous video, and we are only going to worry about one of the motors for now, so you can ignore most of the connections over here on the left-hand side of the H-bridge, we're just going to look at the connections on this side, for the most part. So as a recap, each motor is controlled by two pins on the Arduino that control the motor's direction. If we set one of those pins high while the other pin is low, it'll make the, uh, the motor spin. If we switch which pin is high and low, it'll make the motor spin in the other direction. And if we set both pins low, the motor will stop. What we did before, though, is there's this extra pin called the enable pin that we connected directly to 5 volts on the Arduino. And that is always setting this pin high, so the motor is always going to go full speed. What we can do instead is remove this jumper wire and connect this enable pin to one of the Arduino's pins. That way we will have three pins controlling each motor, two for the direction and one for the speed. And to do that, we need to connect to one of the Arduino pins with the little squiggly symbol or tilde next to it. And those are the pins that can do PWM or pulse width modulation. So before we use those pins, let's talk a little bit about what that means. Here's what you have been doing so far with the Arduino's pins. You have been using the digital write command to set the digital pins either high or low. High has a voltage of 5 volts, low has a voltage of 0 volts, but you cannot choose a voltage in between. For example, you can't set a pin to 2.5 volts. To do that, you need an analog signal, or a signal that is continuously variable. Unlike digital signals, which can only be high or low, an analog signal can take on any value in between the minimum and the maximum. So, for example, you could set an analog voltage to exactly 2.5 volts. The problem is that the Arduino does not have a true analog output. However, it can fake an analog output using the digital pins and something called pulse width modulation, or very rapidly turning the digital pins on and off. So, for example, you can imagine that if I very rapidly switch between 0 volts and 5 volts, and I am low 50% of the time and high 50% of the time, then my effective average voltage would be 2.5 volts. So you can do this using the analog write command. You just have to remember that the analog write command is not outputting a true analog signal. It is turning the pin on and off very quickly to kind of fake an intermediate analog voltage, but this lets you do something like control the speed of a motor. If you want the motor to spin roughly half speed, then you want the signal to be high half of the time and low half of the time. If you want it to spin faster, then you want the signal to be high for longer than it's low, because this will give you a higher average voltage. Similarly, if you want the motor to spin slower, you want the signal to be low for longer than it's high, because this will give you a lower average voltage. Now, this is a pretty advanced concept, so don't worry if you don't perfectly understand all of it. Next, I'll show you how to implement this concept using the analog write command in code. So, going back to the Arduino, remember that I said we need to use one of the PWM pins. Not all of the pins have PWM capability, so we need to pick one with the squiggly symbol or tilde next to it. I am going to choose pin 6, just because that's an open PWM pin, and I'm going to run a jumper wire from there over to the enable pin on my H-bridge, and say I'm going to choose a different color, I'm using blue for my direction control wires, maybe I'm going to use green for my speed control wires. Now, let's modify the code to use the analog write command to control the speed of this motor. So, here I have the program I wrote previously to steer an autonomous vehicle with two motors. As a quick recap, we declare forward and backward pins for each motor, we set those pins as outputs, and then we wrote a bunch of different functions like drive forward or turn right, that set those pins high and low to spin the motors in the correct directions for that action. Now, I have added just a few lines of code to this program that will let me control the speed of the left motor. First, I have declared a pin number for my left motor speed control. Again, I'm using pin 6 for that. 
then in my setup function, technically I don't need to, but I am setting that pin as an output. Now the analog write command is a little weird. It will actually work even if you don't set the pin as an output, but it doesn't hurt to do this if you want it as a reminder for yourself that you're using that pin as an output. Next, I am going to call my drive forward function, and you see I'm actually doing that in setup instead of loop, because if I only do this once, it's actually going to just keep driving forward forever. Even though this function has a delay time in it, I never call anything else after that, so the pin high and low values never change. So the, ro the robot or car will just drive forward forever if you call this once. I could also have that inside the loop function and keep calling it each time, but that's kind of redundant. If all I want to do is get my car to drive straight, I'm just going to call that once here. Then, inside my drive forward function, I have added an analog write command to write a value to my speed control pin. And the one thing we haven't talked about yet, the analog write command actually accepts a value between 0 and 255. So that might be a little counterintuitive if you're not familiar with binary numbers. You might expect it something like 0 between 0 and 100 for 0 to 100% speed. But the range it accepts here is an 8-bit number. In other words, 255 is the biggest number you can store with 8 bits or 8 ones and zeros if you start counting at 0. So it accepts a number between 0 and 255. So for example, if you wanted to go about half speed, you could type in 127 or 128 here but 255 is going to be full speed. So I'm gonna demonstrate this by telling it 255, which basically with the PWM signal just makes that high all the time. It never goes low. And if I hit start simulation here in Tinkercad, I'm going to see both of my motors are running at the same speed. If I look at my RPM or rotations per minute value, they're both running a little over 10,000 RPM. However, if I stop my simulation, and again, change this number to about halfway, say so I'm gonna change it to 128, and run my simulation again, my left motor is now spinning slower than the right motor. It's about half the speed at a little over 5,000 RPM. So I can just by changing this number, change the speed of this motor independently of changing its direction. I haven't changed my digital write commands at all, so I can still use my different functions to change the direction of the motor, but I can also make the motor spin at different speeds by adding the analog write command. So here's what you can do at this point if you haven't been following along. Get ready to pause the video, Delete the connection from the enable pin directly to 5 volts. Replace it with a jumper wire connection to one of the Arduino's PWM pins. I'm using pin 6. Then modify your code to add these lines. Declare a variable for that speed pin. Declare it as an output if you want to. Again, strictly speaking, you don't have to do that. Delete calls to all of your functions except for the drive forward function. And then add an analog write command to the drive forward function. Then when you upload the code to your Arduino, experiment with different numbers here. Put in different numbers between 0 and 255 and watch how fast your motor actually spins. So what you'll see here is that I have the motor programmed to loop through three different speeds. I'm going to use values of 255, 128, and 10 with the analog write command. So I'm going to hit the reset button on my Arduino and plug in the motor power. So once it resets, we should see full speed there with the 255. Then I'm going to drop to about half speed with 128. And then I would expect it to go very, very slowly at 10, but you see that it actually doesn't spin at all. So I'm going to loop back through those same three speeds there. And I'll be quiet, and we'll see if you can hear it when I have it at the 10. So I don't know if the camera's microphone is going to pick it up, but there's a very tiny whirring or whining noise when I have it set to 10. And the problem is there, when you're using a very low value with the analog write command, it actually isn't enough to overcome the internal friction of the motor. So the motor is kind of trying to spin, and you might hear sort of a high-pitched buzzing or whining noise, but it's actually not going to go anywhere. So for very, very low speeds, if you're trying to make your vehicle sort of crawl around, it might not work that well. But for controlling those higher speeds or maybe dropping to about half speed, you should be able to control the speed of your wheels. So you may remember from a previous video that when I turned this robot on and put it down and called the drive forward function and told both wheels to spin at full speed, it doesn't go perfectly straight. It kind of drifted off to one side. So let's turn it on and take a look at what happens here. I'm going to turn it on. Both my wheels are spinning full speed. And you see it kind of drifts to the right. It doesn't go perfectly straight. And that means that maybe for whatever reason there's a little more friction on the right side or the right motor spinning a little slower. So if the left motor spins faster than the right motor, that is going to cause the robot to turn to the right. 
So if I want to get it to drive perfectly straight, I can use the analog right command to slow my left motor down. So if you were having trouble with your vehicle not driving straight, here is your chance to fix that. Pause the video here, edit your program so you control the speed of both motors independently using the analog right command, then upload it and actually test it out. Put your vehicle down, let it drive, see if it's drifting to one side, and then adjust the speeds of the motors to get it to drive straight. Let's quickly switch back to Tinkercad and take a look at how we would do this with the second motor. So remember, we're going to need to choose one of the Arduino's PWM pins to control the motor's speed, and we're going to disconnect the jumper wire that is currently connecting the enable pin directly to 5 volts. So I'm going to delete that wire, and then we're going to connect pin 1 on the H-bridge over to, I'm going to choose pin 5 because that's also a PWM pin on the Arduino. Then in my code, I'm going to declare a variable for that pin. I'm using pin 5. Again, technically, I don't need to use the pin mode command to declare it as an output, but I'm doing it there. And I have also added an analog write for the right motor speed pin in my drive forward function. So now I can independently control the speed of the two motors when my car is driving forward. So what you'll see here is I have kept my right motor at full speed. I've kept that at 255, but I have dropped my left motor speed down to 200. So let's turn it on and see how that goes. And that was pretty good. Maybe not perfect. I might need some fine tuning where I adjust the speeds a little bit one way or the other to get it going perfectly straight, but I have corrected that drift off to one side, and for the most part, now it drives straight. Now, this is where controlling your vehicle starts to become more open-ended. You have a lot of different options now that you can independently control the speed and direction of both wheels. For example, you can try to make it drive forward more slowly. You can make it intentionally do a gradual turn instead of drifting off to one side when you're trying to go straight, you could intentionally make it do that by making the wheels spin at two different speeds. And as you've seen before, you can make it turn in place by making one of the wheels spin backwards. So you have a lot of different options to maneuver and control your vehicle as you are programming it to move around an environment. You can also change your functions to make them a little more flexible. So for example, say we want to be able to drive forward at different speeds. Ideally, we would be able to do that using just one drive forward function. We don't want to have to write separate functions for drive fast and drive slow. We just want to be able to change the value of the speed here in the analog write command. We can do that by adding more inputs or arguments to the function. For example, I'm going to add two and call them left speed and right speed. And now I can replace these hard-coded 255 numbers with those variable names, left speed and right speed. Now, when I call the drive forward function, I need to give it two more inputs. So I could write comma 255, 255. Now when I call drive forward here, that's going to spin both motors full speed forward for two seconds. But then say I want to drive forward more slowly, I can write a second call to the drive forward function. Say I only want to go for one second this time, and I want to drop both motors to half speed. So I'm going to do 128, 128. And that's going to make both motors spin about half speed, so I'll still drive forward, but I will drive forward more slowly. And I'm going to move that down here to my loop function, so I would just alternate driving fast and driving slow forever. So by adding those additional inputs to my function, this is now more flexible, and I can call it to make the robot drive forward at different speeds. I could do the same thing for all of my other functions. So I haven't added speed control for driving backward or any of the turning, but you can do the same thing, add analog write commands, and those additional variables to control the speed, and then you can maneuver the robot in different directions at different speeds with the same functions that you wrote last time. Once you have all of these functions that can control your vehicle's movement, that allows you to hard code a certain path for it to follow, but it still can't react to its environment like a real autonomous car would. To do that, we'll need to add sensors that can detect obstacles and other things in its environment. We'll do that next.